Welcome to the Whole Athlete Podcast, where we focus on discussing topics to help you become a fat burner, optimize health, and improve performance in life and sports. Transform the whole you from the inside out with the holistic method. Let's dive in. Here's your host, Debbie Potts. Hey, everybody. It's Debbie Potts, the host of the Whole Athlete Podcast. And today I have another new guest on the show that I met at Expo West. And Dr. Ken Brown, he is a man with a great story. So we're going to talk today a little bit about CBD and how to improve our health for athletes, how to improve performance, longevity, all starting at a cellular level. And you may have heard about the endocannabinoid system, and we're going to discuss that and how CBD helps improve that system, our nervous system and our immune system combined. So it's really interesting new research that continues to grow. And as you see in the market, that CBD is in everything and everywhere. And does it work? Is it for you? Is it legal? Are you going to get busted in a race if you have it? So we have all sorts of questions to talk to Dr. Ken Brown about. It's, you know, is the research there to show that it really works or is it just all hype and a new fad? So let's ask Dr. Ken Brown more about CBD and their other products. So let's dive into this new episode of the Whole Athlete Podcast. All right, guys, I've got Dr. Ken Brown on the show to give us some new tricks and tips to improve our performance in sports and daily life, as well as my big focus is how to improve the aging process. So thanks for coming on the show today. So excited to chat. Debbie, I'm so thrilled. This is so awesome. And thank you for having me on the whole athlete podcast. This is exciting. Very, um, very cool audience that you have. I mean, people that are interested in exercise, endurance, triathletes. I love it. So this is really close to my heart. So thank you for having me on. Well, we talk about endurance athletes, endurance sports, and just anyone in general that's a type A personality that always likes to push the limits too much and probably thinks, I just wrote a blog on this, more is better. And always trying to bring it down. So we find that healthy hormetic stress, how much is too much and not destroy ourselves along the way. <laughs> so what kind of tell us your story? What do you do? And I gave your intro in the beginning of the show, but kind of talk what I like to ask people straight on is what's your passion, purpose, and what's your mission? So um, as you mentioned, my name is Ken Brown. I'm a board certified gastroenterologist. I'm traditionally trained medical doctor and Over a 10-year span, I was doing pharmaceutical research, and it was during that period that I realized that we were lacking ginormous gaps in our healthcare. And I was over there looking at the protocols that that these pharmaceutical companies were doing. They were spending tons of money. And quite frankly, I'll be honest, I was making a lot of money doing that, doing these studies for them. And that's when I realized, I'm like, wow, we are completely missing the boat. The, The whole industry is dependent on itself. Disease is necessary to keep this machine going. That machine being pharmaceutical industry, hospitals, all this other stuff. And we're not talking nutrition. We're not talking exercise. We're talking, how do we throw a drug at it? And I was part of the, I was sort of part of the problem. I was a cog in the wheel. Mm -hmm. And that's when I discovered that it is possible to find natural solutions to some of these problems that we're completely ignoring. And during that period, my specialty is in irritable bowel syndrome, digestive health. I'm very biased, but you can imagine that I believe that all health begins and ends in the gut. I say that all the time, so you're in the right spot. (laughs) Yes, and I think that most athletes would agree with that, that everything begins with nutrition and in the gut. If you don't have a healthy gut, you don't have a healthy body. If you don't have a healthy gut, you don't have a body that will age well. So your whole concept of I deal with endurance and I deal with endurance athletes and I deal with, you know, the anti-aging process, it all begins in the gut. Yes. So uh, I was doing this about 10 years ago and that's when I started meeting different scientists around the world. So it's interesting how the journey happens because although had I come from this with a functional medicine background, and I say that because now I'm friends with some of the brightest functional medicine minds in the world, I never would have even thought about doing pharmaceutical research. So what I have been able to do is see both sides of this. So now I consider myself a functional gastroenterologist 
But the reality is, is that I'm trying to bridge the gap between these two worlds. So my mission and passion is to do exactly that. How do I bring that knowledge and how do we get them, and I mean them being the established medical institution, to understand things like you're doing, yeah. which is let's talk nutrition and exercise and see if we can make people healthier. So that's my goal. That's good. It's just a little goal you have. <laughs> Tiny goal. I know. Well, that's what, you know, I got more into the holistic method and, and nutritional therapy as I became a nutritional therapy practitioner and doing FDN practitioner next year that I think as a personal trainer side of it for 25 years, I wasn't, you don't get very far if you're just training people and they're not doing the rest of the work. And we never talk about that in fitness is just, you know, training someone two, three times a week, but there's so much more to being healthy. And from your side of it, as a doctor and seeing GI stress as me as a trainer, seeing people coming in with, you know, aches and pains and joint pain and bloated belly and this and this and this, that, you know, it makes you drive that you have to overlap areas and not just specialize and just, all right, let's work on treating people at traditional medicine ways and it's not working. And me being a personal trainer, I'm not really getting people healthy by just giving them a routine twice a week or whatever it was. So it's great journey you're on. I, I'm along with it. So what did you create? You have a business now you're doing this. Talk a little bit about your products and what you're launching here and what's going yeah, to the so- benefit. So um, I developed a product that uses polyphenols, which are the molecules that are the good molecules in the Mediterranean diet. And those molecules um, actually help people with their gut. So I developed a product called Atrantil, A-T-R-A-N-T-I-L. Um, and that we've got clinical research. It does well. It fixes bloating and all this other stuff. And we'll get to that in a second. But I want to get back to what you were talking about because I want to tell a little bit more about my journey. And why I'm so impressed with what things that people like you are doing. Okay. So my deal is that when I, when I was researching you, and the reason why I was so excited to do your podcast is because I believe in exactly where you came from. I, um, years ago, I had a tremendous amount of pain. I had a knot right here that in, you know, in my right trapezius, whatever you want to call it. And I went to, it so happens that my wife is actually a physical medicine and rehab doctor. And, or she's not practicing right now, but I went to her, I went to an orthopedist, I went to a neurologist, I went to all these different people and I got MRIs, got all this stuff. And then one of my patients came in and said, you know, you're, because I literally would talk to patients and I would just be sitting there like with just a ridiculous pain, just so, it, it hurts so bad. It took everything out of me. It consumed me. And then one of them said, go see my friend who's a chiropractor. And he happens to be a guy here in my city in Plano, Texas, called Ron Tribendis. Ron happens to be a professional triathlete. <laughs> and he understands. And so when I went in to go see him, this was you know, 15 years ago, whatever. During the time when I was doing all this research and I was trying to go, oh my God, there's better ways to do this. He looked at me and he goes, tell me what you do for a living. Well, I'm a gastroenterologist. I get into a position. And he just immediately, the first person ever to go, oh, your Terry's minor is becoming fatigued. I'm going to do ART on that and we're going to do it. So I got conditioned that people that understand the body, that people that understand how to move properly, I respect tremendously. And he's the first person that fixed me. (laughs) Then I'm in the office one day and one of my patients... um, uh, who's a trainer, who's into the same thing that you're into, which is proper movement. It's not about just lifting and moving the weight. It's about doing it appropriately. Mark Jensen's his name. And he went through skeletal issues and I ended up training with him for about six months. So all of this, and the reason why I bring this up is, yes, I have a product. Yes, I do this. But the product doesn't (laughs) exist unless I had these experiences, unless I went through this discomfort where I had to find somebody that knew some other knowledge where I found somebody that said, you're exercising wrong. Your posture's bad. You're this. We need to align your skeleton first. Then we need to change your movements. Just because, I mean, at that period, it was, oh, I'm, I'm strong. I'm deadlifting this. But you're deadlifting in a bad way kind of thing. Yeah. Anyways, so I just think it's funny because, yes, there's a product, but the product doesn't exist unless you go through something that makes you think differently. 
And I owe it to a few people to fix me. And I didn't give up. That's the other thing. I didn't just stop at the orthopedist where he did the MRI and said, you don't have a bulging disc, you're fine. I found somebody that could fix me. And that's why I applaud people like you that you continue to grow and you continue yeah. to fix the body. So that's great. So it's yes, we have a company, but more importantly, it's not the company that's important. It's the story behind it, in my opinion. And that's why I love having people as yourself on the show that, you know, when I go to trade shows or conferences and nutrition, I find everyone has a story. Like everyone that's a nutritional therapy practitioner, we're all a practitioner for a reason. And same with functional diagnostic nutrition practitioners. Everyone becomes one because of their own areas of opportunity experiences. So that's why I always love everyone that has a product on the market at Expo West or Paleo FX. It's just, I always like to ask, okay, hey, what's your, you know, what, how do you come up with this? But right? I think everyone has a journey they're on and everything happens for a reason. Like, yeah, you met those people because they're setting you up for what your passion and your purpose that you didn't know at the time was, but now here you are, you know, going outside of the box with this GI repair system and working on inflammation in the body in a totally different way that you would ever learn in medical school. Yeah. So when I was doing the clinical research, I'd mentioned earlier that I was doing the clinical research. I was looking at the one problem that I deal with as a gastroenterologist that 20% of the U.S. population suffers from is something called irritable bowel syndrome. The thing that bothered me the most was you can have diarrhea or constipation and the actual diagnosis is only um, that you can have abdominal discomfort and change in bowel habits relieved with going to the bathroom. It's this trash can term. So I would sit there and go, why are we labeling? And mind you, you bill, you get paid by insurance companies to use the right code. So everybody kept labeled. It's so easy to put people in a IBS basket. And you have diarrhea or you have constipation. Those are totally opposing symptoms. How in the world do we as medical doctors agree that that's the same diagnosis? That was the problem I had. So I met a guy named Dr. Mark Pimentel who had all these animal models where he was showing that it's actually because of bacteria growing where it shouldn't be and these different things, but it all comes down to questioning what you've been told. And many of us in the traditional medical field, they learn, we learn what we learn and you don't know what you don't know. Then when I started getting into the functional medicine side, you meet all these people who have a voice Mm -hmm. and they continually question everything, but they don't have the, let's say the horsepower or the dollars to get their voice out. So I'll meet people that are acupuncturists. I'll meet people that like Ron who fixed me. I mean, I will always stand up at this point and say, I do not say what you, whatever your belief is, is like, let's, let's look at it. Let's see if it makes physiologic sense. Let's see if it does this. So because of that, that allowed me to think, now, wait a minute. If we know that IBS is being caused by something different, possibly bacteria growing where it shouldn't be, then why can't we find a natural solution for it? And that's where my research went. So I spent the next eight years working my tail off doing that. And the we all have these pivotal moments. And my aha moment was when I just got off the phone with Dr. Pimentel and he was describing how methane is creating constipation. So IBS with constipation equals methane, IBS with diarrhea equals hydrogen sulfide. I went, oh my gosh, that's our unifying diagnosis. And as we can't call it the same thing. We have to call it something different. Mm -hmm. And I wrote methane on the board and my research manager, Brandy, at the time, when we were doing a ton of clinical research and doing well financially from it, she just went, huh, that's funny. I I worked for a senator. She was a former lawyer. She goes, I worked for a senator in Iowa and they were trying to mandate that farmers put different types of feed in cattle's food, you know, so different things in the food. Mm -hmm. to decrease methane production because cattle are ruminants. That means they have a four-chamber stomach and they have bacteria producing methane. There was a, if you, I'm a huge fan of a guy named Lil Dicky, L-I-L-D-I-C-K-E-Y. He is a rapper on YouTube and he put out an earth video 
it's a little offensive. So if you don't <laughs> like foul words, but he's a very conscientious rapper. <laughs> and follow it up to his video, he discusses how our food industry is destroying the environment. And one of the ways it is, is through cattle producing methane. So it's fascinating that, it's, that now people are talking about the cattle again. So we figured out that by putting something called Cabracho Colorado into the, or the, the farmers figured out that if you could put Cabracho Colorado in the feeds, it would decrease methane production. So we were the first company to ever think of doing something like that. We put Cabracho in with two other ingredients. And now we basically decrease human methane production which helps people with their bloating and constipation. So it all comes full circle in the sense that if you don't question the norm, you'll never figure out the next thing. Yeah, so the supplement you have is, is people, their symptoms are bloating, gas is the main symptoms that you're looking at. Or is just how do you know if you have like diarrhea or you have what other symptoms are you looking at to target the who needs to take your supplement? All right. So basically, if you eat and you bloat, you have a 88% chance of getting better if you take our issue. So people go, ah, I don't have that. Well, your listeners, if they're triathletes, if they're endurance athletes, there's a very high likelihood that you will eventually have this. And here's why. When you push your body, so do you still do triathlons? Uh, no, but I'm trying, I train for them. <laughs> I don't, haven't been able to race, but I train. <laughs> so there's, um, in, in case you're wondering, I think there's a race in Bernie, which is a 0.5 kilometer that I think everybody could do. Yeah, it's only 0.5 <laughs> kilometers. <laughs> but actually, it's hilarious. It's in Bernie, Texas. So just in case you don't want to train for the Kona, you can yeah. always do 0.5 kilometers <laughs> where they serve donuts and beer along the way. <laughs> there you go. So. Um, what happens with an endurance athlete and with anybody um, who pushes their body, but very specifically the endurance athlete, what, when you push yourself, your body will divert blood away from the organs that it's not being used. So while you're running, while you're swimming, while you're biking, blood gets diverted away from the intestines and it gets selectively put into the muscles where you're demanding that. Mm -hmm. So when that happens, your muscles will start to produce reactive oxygen species and reactive nitrogen species, including lactic acid and so on. They ha that has to be processed. So the body will work very hard to try and get rid of that. And there are certain mechanisms, cellular mechanisms that do that. But while the blood is being diverted, if you continue to push yourself it has been shown, and we have, um, we have a blog article on this, and we've got on, on our show, we actually discussed this, about how it has been demonstrated that triathletes and endurance athletes tend to divert the blood so that the, the inflammatory process creates leaky gut or intestinal permeability. So doctors don't ever use the word leaky gut. If you go to your doctor and say, I think that I have leaky gut, they will, if you're a traditional MD, they'll look at you and say, no, there's, that doesn't exist. But if you say, I believe I have intestinal perme permeability, then that makes more sense. So once you develop some intestinal permeability, what I mean is you push your body to a limit that you're demanding blood flow to the muscles, you redirect blood flow from the intestine, and that becomes the target of inflammation. I'll say that again. Your blood flow goes to the muscles, you leave your gut vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Then many endurance athletes will take fructose-based products, goo and the original stuff and all those other things, and your body has a hard time di actually absorbing that when you don't have enough blood flow there. So when that happens, that becomes food for bacteria. So the bacteria will then break that down, create inflammation, and that leads to more intestinal permeability. So I have proven that endurance athletes actually have higher rate of intestinal issues than your average person, which is kind of sad because you're trying to do all these cool things for your body and you actually screw your gut up. So I have a lot of professional athletes that come and see me 
because they were doing fantastic. And when they hit their peak, they end up having GI issues. So that's part of the whole science behind everything that we have going on with, um, with the science of endurance athletes. It all comes down to inflammation and, and blood flow. And that's why when we launched Atron Teal, I was adamant that we had what's called an NSF certification, which is certified for sport because I want my professional athletes to be able to take this product. I have so many of them. And so that's why I was adamant that we, and what that means is, is that we had it third party tested so that you know exactly what you're taking. That's the long-winded answer as to why everybody that's listening needs to <laughs> take care of their gut. <laughs> well, hopefully my clients, they are fat adapted, so they're not taking goo and all the sugar, but I know majority of people do and they do need that help because that's do why. You keto, I, do you have keto triathletes? There's some, and I'm, it's more metabolically efficient athletes and training people to be more, the fat adapted athlete oh, is my it. goal. And that's how yeah. I coach people. So for 10 years, I've done that. If I could get the testing equipment back again, do metabolic efficiency testing on a treadmill and a bike and, and at rest, so you can see where is your best heart rate, where you're burning fat and not <laughs> being above your anaerobic threshold. Can I, can I, I, I go down rabbit holes. I apologize. That's okay. I do too. So we got to watch out. <laughs> All right. So anyways, so the person I was talking about earlier, Brandy, her and I used to run a lot and she's a, uh, and she's a much more efficient runner and we would run and I would just basically try and keep up every morning. I would, and this is when I was really getting into running and I just could not believe we were, we would go do this hill work. And my heart rate would literally be, because she runs like six minute miles, I run like eight minute miles. So trying to keep up with that, you know, you, and I had, I, she was like talking and I'm like, check your heart rate. Cause my heart rate was like 190. Hers was 180. So I'm like, this is inconceivable. We have to go get this figured out. So we went to the try shop at 5 a.m. and we had our blood tested for lactic acid and the whole nine yards, the metabolic test. Uh-huh. Exactly. VO2 max and all that stuff. As it turns out, I was just training myself to tolerate pain because I was continually anaerobic. It was the first time ever that working out harder was not working out smarter. And it's exactly what you're out there to teach that message. That is my passion and my purpose. And what I just wrote a blog on in today's blog I'm writing is on the black hole training. <laughs> exactly. I was talking. black hole training for like five years. <laughs> I know. And everyone still does that. I mean, we started this podcast used to be called Fit Fat Fast back in 2011. I started doing a metabolic testing card on people in 2005. And and being the mafetone heart rate, 180 minus your age. So, you know, you want to do the low 180 minus your age is your max aerobic function heart rate or do HIIT training and, and do that polarized training or, you know, do more HIIT. But you, I always have explained to my own personal training clients is high and then low. You know, you got to recover before you go back up. And a lot of people just stay, like you were saying, I think a lot of people do too much is, and that's, again, why I feel like I have to run by myself a lot of times if I'm trying to keep, you know, like yesterday, 130 to 140 heart rate. I can't run with yeah. anyone because I, I just got to stay at my own pace. So we're totally so, off traffic. Have you ever done this that I'm talking about where you check your lactic acid and see what happens with it while you're doing it? No, I've not done the lactic acid because we didn't have that. I know a place in Seattle where I live, they were doing that, but metabolic testing cart only. So if this is, so this is strictly for your listeners. So when they read your blog, they'll understand why this is actually happening because it was new to me. I'm a medical doctor. I work out, I try and eat right. And it never occurred to me that I was basically not doing what I wanted to do on a mitochondrial level. Yes. So I was training at an anaerobic level, chasing a rabbit the whole time. So Mm -hmm. What happened is, is that you get on this treadmill, you put the whole mask on, you do this. And, and he was checking our blood, 5 a.m., empty stomach, whole nine yards. And the guy kept asking, he's like, he's like, are you in pain? Do you want to stop? And I'm like, no. Yeah. I'm like, fine, fine, fine. This and he is kept my asking. normal. He's like, yeah, it's like, this is how I work out. And he's like, he's like, are you sure you don't want to stop? And so what they do is they keep increasing this, the speed and the incline. And you're supposed to go, I can't go anymore. And that was my normal where I was chasing this. And he goes, so when you look at my graph, it's fascinating. It basically is, and I was going to draw it, but uh, <laughs> it basically is my lactic acid starts to increase at a heart rate of 124 
And this, mind you, I'm running like six miles every morning and then I would lift in the afternoon. So I thought that I was in great mm-hmm. shape, run fast. Yeah. And my heart rate would go up. And what would happen is that my lactic acid had a linear curve straight up. So what I was doing was teaching my body to run in pain. That's it. Yeah. I, nothing else. So then when Brandy went, she did the same thing where her lactic acid went up and then it plummeted and then it slowly went up. When we would run, she would get bursts of energy where I would be dying and now it makes sense. If you're a metabolically efficient person, your mitochondria have been trained to convert the lactic acid back into the Krebs cycle and you can use it for energy. Mm -hmm. So all these super endurance athletes that run 110 miles in the Mojave Desert and all this stuff, they're they're superhuman because their mitochondria have been trained. Everything is trained to be efficient to run like that. So what was really cool is I'm a better runner now than I was then. And it's because I believe the polyphenols in Atron Teal actually get rid of the reactive oxygen species, the reactive nitrogen species. So a Dr. Boatwell, I believe, I went to a lecture, a Dr. Boatwell out of England gave this fantastic lecture about how the future of endurance athletes really comes down to polyphenols. Mm -hmm. And the polyphenols, if you take a gram of polyphenols, 1,000 milligrams before a three hours before an endurance race, and then four hours afterwards, not only do you improve performance because the polyphenols increase the nitric uh, oxide to the muscles, nitric oxide is a vasodilator. It will increase the blood flow to your muscles. The nitric oxide increases the blood flow, and then afterwards, you flush out that lactic acid. When I was running like that, I didn't have my own little my yeah. own little thing to fix it. Now I'm like, ah, you know, I should get back now to you that. Know. And um, and so that's that's one of the reasons why I think so many of these pro athletes come to me because not only do we fix their gut because we fix the dysbiosis, meaning the bacteria growing where it shouldn't be, but they also are able to have better performance. So I have a bunch of patients that come to me and they're like, I just had my 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 best marathon my best, you know, triathlon. Um, And, you know, initially I was like, well, that's cool. It's probably because you didn't have to use the restroom. Yeah. It's probably you didn't have to stop and poop, you know, (laughs) because so many athletes stop and the porta potties on the way. And they're like, no, it's more than that. I just felt better. And so I'm going to end up, I would love to, this is part of the research. We actually Mm -hmm. submitted um, a full protocol to a large pharmaceutical company because I said, I think that we can have an athletic performance product on the drug that I'm researching for you. Mm -hmm. And they flat out said, no, that's a small market. I'm like, okay, (laughs) that was one of the, and that would, that rejection is what forced me to go. I want to do more than just this. And one door closes more open. It really does. You know, you just, you just go, okay, I'm still passionate about it. I still believe in it. I'm more passionate now than I ever been. We launched the product three years ago and it's doing well and it's helping people. And I love that, but I want to keep expanding the network. I'm very dear to the endurance athlete and the person that works out. I believe that endurance athletes and bodybuilders understand more about nutrition than any doctor that, that they, not any doctor, any traditionally yeah. trained gastroenterologist. I'll just lump them into the group that I know. I think that you know more about nutrition than I do. And I'm honest and I'm willing to admit that. Well, I think more people, endurance athletes, and be competitive. You're you're always looking at ways to improve your performance and get faster and stronger and rebound. So after a race, so you can go train again. <laughs> and they have that problem though: is more is is better, and that's what I was just writing about. But everything. Have you read, have you read Ben Greenfield's book? Um, I just got his second edition. I, Beyond training, it's yeah. called Beyond training. Well, that's what I, I'm one of his coaches, Keon coach. And I have like, this oh, shut up. folder. Really? Well, I'm wearing my shirt here. <laughs> that's what I'm wearing. And I was just sitting in my coach program and I have actually the black hole 
I think it's upstairs. I was highlighting things in there and looking up research because I realized that book is everything we did in Keon. Are you serious? I, I just happened to be, I just happened to be, I know his CEO, Angelo, and I know Ben, I was on his podcast. He's, he's a super cool guy. Um, I love that. I love that guy. Um, I got his second edition book and the, the, the whole intro is about a 50 year old triathlete that burns himself out. Mm-hmm. I, I have a whole book about it. No I think <laughs> that's, so, yeah. that's so cool. So what you're just saying though, I want to add in, this is something I've been totally geeking out with and, and at different expos like Kayla FX had two companies doing the exact same thing of mitochondrial rescue. And I'm just finishing reading Dr. McCullough's book, Fat for Fuel, which I've, you know, understood for a long time, but putting this all together and I've done stuff with Kron, Omega Spore Biotic and looking at the gut microbiome. So I listened to all these speakers at different conferences. Are you conferences. a fan of Omega Spore? I find, well, nutritional therapy, we tested on people's gut and I can tell if it works or not. So we specifically test supplements against people to find out what works best for them. So I find it we'll works get, well. We'll get, we'll get back to that in a second. <laughs> I didn't mean to. Yeah. Welcome. No. Welcome to having an ADD guest on your, on your show. <laughs> Focus. You need the supplements. I just natural stacks. <laughs> so it's focusing on putting the pieces of the puzzle together because my story, Life is on a Race, is about adrenal fatigue, which is, you know, mitochondria dysfunction as well now and HPA axis dysfunction, but it's also your microbiome. So you don't know which part of the stress you're causing stress to your cells and how to optimize your health from the inside out, I would say at a cellular level is perhaps focusing on the health of the microbiome, but also the health of the mitochondria by the way we train, sleep, eat, my holistic method. But it's just interesting hearing like your perspective, then you listen to other people. It's like, all right, these all have to overlap, like getting into the cannabinoid system too and the CBD and how does oh. all everything overlap to really improve performance and to get healthy so I can run without my heart rate going high and getting energy into my cell and being able to do a 730 pace and not be running at a 10 minute mile. <laughs> so anyways, I just find it great to you know hear everyone's different perspective, but see there there's a common theme, performance and longevity, but really I would say everyone's individual. There's not one size fits all for one person because we're all unique. But gut health, as you were saying, is is really essential. But the mitochondria health is really essential as well. Oh, I love it. And so, you know, what you're describing is ultimately when we start having disease, it comes down to one word, inflammation. Yes. Inflammation causes disease. Yeah. We have to protect ourselves. Does inflammation there's many ways that we can induce inflammation on ourselves. We can smoke, we can create reactive oxygen species that result in a cascade of inflammatory processes. We can do different things like that, or we can overwork and not allow our bodies to recover. The whole process is when you do something, anything, you have to let your body adapt to it. That's a term called hormesis. I just wrote a blog on that too. Oh my gosh. <laughs> You're talking the rain, the right, but no, that's what I keep talking about is how much stress is what I just wrote. And I'm doing my own little Thursday video blog on it. But that's the whole thing is what the hermetic stressors, the Q, you know, I call it the Goldilocks effect. Not too much, not too little, but find the right amount that is, you know, recover, go you know, hit training or like cold therapy and all that. Exactly. Yeah. You have to allow your body to recover. And so that's why, that's the only reason why I even brought up beyond training is because his opening is a guy that pushes himself too hard, becomes skinny fat and thinks he's doing the right things, but really he's just breaking his body down. And I see that as a gastroenterologist. I see people push themselves Mm -hmm. to the point where the first thing that goes is intestinal health. Some would argue that, oh, it's joint, whatever. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, probably if you have poor form. But you can feel that though, right? I mean, joint pain, you know. Gut health, you don't always know. Yeah, and then if you, if the gut health is the canary in the minefield because, or in the mine shaft, whatever the term is, (laughs) um, uh, the canary in the coal mine. Um, Because if your gut health starts to to deteriorate, then you will end up with the other inflammatory processes, which include cardiovascular issues, cerebrovascular issues, 
that's how come so many people that have run their entire life and done things. And then you're like, oh my God, my friend Joe had a heart attack. <laughs> like why? He does marathons like, yeah. every weekend. <laughs> 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 yeah. It's like, oh, well, I believe that the future of this is to offset some of that. So when, when I was talking about Dr. Boatwell about a uh, thousand milligrams of polyphenols, that's four bowls of cherries to think about this for a second. That's you a can lot. eat four bowls of cherries or you can try and... And not have GI distress from that. <laughs> yeah, you're not going to have GI distress. Yeah, your fructose burden is going to be put to, put to the test there. So um, we believe that we can help the athlete with Atrantil because you can get 1,000 milligrams with two doses of Atrantil. There is some in vitro evidence, meaning on a Petri dish, not in the body, that polyphenols have been shown to cause reactive oxygen species, meaning there's some blogs, and, and I'm, I'm only saying this because if, if you publish this and somebody asks you, this is, they're like, oh, I just Googled this and I heard that there's a forum, blah, blah, blah. And what happens is it's beautiful. Mother nature knows how to do it better. If you eat a a broad spectrum of polyphenols, or you take a polyphenol supplement that has a lot of different polyphenols, the body uses the polyphenols to get rid of certain cells by creating inflammation in the cells that are not behaving appropriately. Huh. Meaning that is one of the reasons why they believe that the Mediterranean diet is an anti-cancer diet the polyphenols can get rid of certain cells. Nobody's been able to figure this out yet. They're like, how in the world can it be stop inflammation and then create a little inflammation? It creates inflammation in the cells that don't know how to handle it and they die. That's called apoptosis. And that's why the Mediterranean diet is an anti-aging diet also. So it's, it's super cool that the nutritional aspect of this can be both anti-inflammatory and anti-cancer and anti-aging. So it's a win-win-win. Well, I think the oxidative stress is a big part of what we put on our body from exercising and the chronic exercise that endurance athletes do, especially triathletes when they're doing three sports and living life as we do every day as a race. But the the ROS is what I keep reading more and more about how that's leading to, you know, the oxidative stress and the cell damage. And that's why I think that more and more research about mitochondria health and fasting and cell autophagy is so popular and, and all that new research, but getting the right supplements too, to help rebuild everything. And so I'm, I, am, I, I, I have an assistant helping me. And every time you say certain words, she holds up a sign, don't, don't you say <laughs> and fasting. And that's like going squirrel. I'm like, oh, yes, I want to go there. <laughs> so let's talk about a couple quick things. The okay, I'll give you to help you focus. And I won't throw you any more squirrels across the screen, but I have about 10 minutes <laughs> left or else we'll be here for four hours. I know. Yes. Good so, topic. So um, what squirrel line, do you want to do? Well, I want to do two squirrels in one. Okay. It comes down to this. Um, so basically recovery is the key to everything, right? Yes. Exercising is not necessarily the thing that makes you better. It's the recovery that makes you better. Exactly. It, the recovery is dependent on a couple things. So the recovery is dependent on your body's ability to, um, adapt the hormesis aspect of it. So the endocannabinoid system, we all have one that just as important as the GI system, the neurosystem, the cardiovascular system. I'm very passionate about this because I have actually had tremendous benefit with my patients where I treat them with polyphenols and, a, you know, our CBD. Um, I teamed up with Elixinol and we have a CBD that actually helps resolve and helps recover. So it gets you back to balance. Everybody's very confused about this. It's really simple. You hit the reset button, get you back to balance, okay? Homostasis, right? Yes. But the term, it, so what I have the advantage of seeing patients all day long. I know what they get and what they don't get. When I say that word, they don't get it. When I just go, let's just get back to normal. Yeah. Let's just normal. get back to normal. I want you back to normal because everybody 
has a time where they were better. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they're not seeing a doctor. Everybody has a time where they were better. Otherwise, they wouldn't see you to help them as a trainer mm -hmm. or to take Kion supplements or whatever. So that's the first thing. You have to recover. You need to aid recovery. And, you know, my motto is to bridge the gap with this. And so if we're going to start bridging gaps, we're going to bridge the gap with, you know, traditional supplements or traditional treatment and this. Then the other thing is fasting that you were getting at. What that does is it gives your body a break. And whether you're talking a five-day fast or an intermittent fasting, all it does is it allows the body to recover on a cellular level. So I do three five-day fasts a year. I personally do circadian rhythm fasting where I essentially do whatever, intermittent fasting, you can call it whatever you want. But I follow Sachin Panda. I who, love this book. Yeah, love that stuff. Mm -hmm. I do that for cellular recovery. I do the polyphenols for muscular recovery and the endocannabinoid system to help all of it. So we have 10 minutes. I didn't. I need all of that. <laughs> so the, then you, so when do you take everything, those two different supplements? Cause I need cellular help recovery and repair, but also, you know, the inflammation, but the cell health, I feel like for me personally, but I know a lot of people just are damaging their cells because we don't have the ability to slow down enough to give enough recovery time before the next workout or before another crazy hectic day. Yeah. So, um, you know, I could sit there and tell you that um, I, I wake up at 2 a.m. and I take N-acetylcysteine and then at 4 a.m., I will uh, do an infusion of vitamin C followed by that. You really do? Or are you just saying that? No, I said that I could tell you all this stuff. <laughs> but the one thing that I do and I insist on is that I sleep. Yeah, I was going to say, think, hopefully you're sleeping, not waking yeah, up that many yeah, yeah. times. <laughs> so I think it's funny because everybody wants to try and do stuff. And just yeah. do one thing. Make sure that you sleep. And make sure that you sleep well. Because none of it works if you don't do that. So I think the three pillars of health are gut health, sleep, hygiene, and brain health. Mm -hmm. Those are the three things and you will feel better. So you can read all the books. You can do everything you want. Just don't look at Facebook. Don't look at Instagram. Go to bed, sleep a full eight hours, and you will be a better, more metabolically efficient person. Everything will work well. So Yeah. So just the last little bit, brain health, do you find that you're, to improve our brain health, is that by connecting or improving the gut health because they've got brain connection or is that the CBD, the endocannabinoid? Oh, you know, so I'm, I'm actually working with several graduate students. You're going to see um, multiple publications that we have coming out um, where we have shown that the inflammatory markers in the brain have actually been affected by gut health. So we know that if you have gut inflammation, you're going to hit, and I don't want, I don't, I don't want to get too sciencey because I'll geek out in like a millisecond, but we know that when you stimulate a mast cell, which is a cell that lives in your gut lining, it will release inflammatory markers that will go straight to your brain. So in other words, there's this phenomenon that when your gut gets upset, it has a direct link to your brain, your central nervous system. And we know that when you have gut inflammation, you will have brain inflammation, which is why the brain-gut access is so closely tied. I, uh, my aha moment, why I got into the endocannabinoid system is that I had a patient who had autism and he became an adult, 17 years old. Mother brought him into me because she said that he was becoming essentially violent when he would eat. And she correlated it with his, she said that I'm bringing him to you. I know you're not an autism specialist. It's about six years ago, but, or less than that, four years ago. but when he eats, he becomes uncontrollable. And now he's big enough. He's becoming a young man. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is my baby who's getting strong. 
and I can't, I can't control them. She goes, I'm, I'm at wit's end. She goes, all I know is that when he eats, it gets worse. So we treated him for his gut health. We put him on Altrontil. And I said, I'm new to this. I don't really understand it yet, but I do know that the gut causes brain inflammation. And I do know that the majority of the brain receptors are called CB1 receptors in, in, in the brain. And I gave her a bottle of very expensive CBD that I now partner with. And she brought him back two months later. And he was, she was crying. She's like, this is the boy that I had 15 years ago. Because when something happened when he was three years old and, or two years old and he changed and uh, the autism became uncontrollable. And she has been the reason why I'm very passionate about doing this. Um, I have these companies and I let the guys that run the business run the business, but I continue to, I mean, you can tell that I'm, I'm a freaking nerd and I'm trying to run down rabbit holes at all times. And <laughs> I learn something new, I'll try and implement it. But I always think about that person. I'm like, we fixed his gut and we gave him CBD. Yeah. That changed everyone's life, everyone around him. And I have not, he came back a year later, perfect still. And I haven't seen him since. Wow. And that tells me as a doctor that they're, that they're better. When I don't see yeah. somebody, that means they're better. Yeah, it's a good thing. <laughs> it's a good thing. Hopefully. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> So we're out of time, but just wanted to have you share your links where you want people to go to learn more from you and your mission and your products and what Do you're working on. Do we have a vanity URL, uh, uh, URL for us? No, uh, the whole athlete. The whole athlete. So probably it'll yeah. be lovemytummy.com slash the whole athlete. We'll just do that. Yeah. So your listeners, we always give... Um, We'll give your listeners a ginormous discount if they can uh, use that and, and they go to the URL. So okay. do you have an acronym for the whole athlete or is it uh, the whole athlete? We can make it shorter. <laughs> <laughs> love my let's, tummy, the whole athlete would be really long. Let's go ahead and do it right now. So it's going to be lovemytummy.com. Athlete. T T W A. TWA. Yeah. And I'll tell, I'll tell my man, Eric, to go ahead and set up the URL so that your listeners will get a huge discount on Atron Teal. And then you can go to KBMD health. That's .com. That's, that's me. I'm Ken Brown, MD health.com. We have CBD there and um, that's the CBD that I back. I don't just back. I researched all of them. I researched everyone. I have a certificate of analysis. We're doing studies on this. We're, it's super exciting. It's a very exciting time in natural health. My goal ultimately is that my company, uh, DHAT, I'm part of a large group. We're going to start doing functional research. Mm -hmm. We're going to be able to sit there and say, you know, Debbie, the stuff you're doing looks really cool. Let's figure out if it's better than this or that. Yeah. And prove your science. I think that's what people want. They want to know if it works, you know, you just, yeah. cause there's so many things out there, but to know that it works some people, not just mice. <laughs> 100%. Yes. Yeah. But you know what? Mice have IBS also. We need to fix them as well. Yeah. They're important. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. It's so fun talking to you and I look forward to meeting up with you in the future and we'll follow you and hopefully have well, you on the show I'm again. I'm excited because it looks like we're going to be at a lot of the same conferences. You and I, I run. Thanks Google. for telling me. I got part of the Mindshare <laughs> Mastermind. Oh yeah. Dude, you're going to love that. That that stuff is awesome. Yeah. And I, I love the fact, I had no idea that you're part of Ben. He's like a huge, yeah. like I'm a huge fan of his and and, and his whole team. So that's awesome. Yeah, it's fun. I'm always doing more is not better, but I, <laughs> I almost have to practice what I preach too. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much. Debbie. All right. Thanks for listening to the Whole Athlete Podcast. If you have any questions, feedback, or topic suggestions, let us know on Facebook or at wholeathletepodcast.com. You can help us continue and grow by leaving a review on iTunes. Thanks again and see you next time.